Arise, why sleepest thou, O Lord? Arise, cast us not off to the end. Why turnest thou thy face away and forgettest our trouble? Our belly hath cleaved to the earth. Arise, O Lord, help us and deliver us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Ghost, Amen. In this Sunday of Zextagesima, we read this from uh, Psalm 43 in the introit, this prayer, not of desperation, but a prayer of hope. And this is our continuation from a theme last week about the souls in purgatory. Uh, We're having some, starting from the Septuagesima season into Lent, we have to have some hard-hitting sermons uh, so we can go deeper so as to avoid the flames of purgatory ourselves, but also to have this as an act of charity toward those souls who are the poorest of the poor, cannot help themselves in purgatory. They need our assistance and our generosity and our sacrifice, especially in this season of penance. It will be an, a great moment to start uh, to assist them and gain those graces in our preparation for Easter. So our first point today will be to consider the gospel as we see those four fields of disposition of a heart in which the Lord will place his grace, his divine seed. You can have on two spectrums. You can have a hard heart. You can have a stony heart. Or a heart that is surrounded by thorns and thistles. Or you can have a wide open, good, fertile heart. So if you're towards the hard heart, you'll probably have a lot more purgatory to go through upon death. But if you have a good, generous heart that is detached from all things and accepting all humiliations almost with, almost with a spiritual joy, which is the good, fertile heart, the generous heart, then you'll probably spend less time in purgatory. So our first point, our question is, why are the pains of purgatory so severe? Well, they're so severe because the flames of purgatory were created with one sole purpose, and that is to punish because we, as we know here in this life, the fires that we see, physical fires, are not meant to punish. They're made out of the goodness of God to help us cook, to help us warm up our, our homes. But by accidents, it could hurt, especially if man's ill will is involved and burns other, other men. Then we have some problems. But his purpose is not to punish on this life. But that cannot be said about the flames of purgatory, for their only sole purpose of existing is to punish. In other words, to burn away all that dross, that is, temporal punishments that we accumulate, even through one semi, get this, semi-deliberate venial sin. As, as Pope Paul VI said when he was changing all the rules about indulgences in the late 60s, he made this point very clear that even a venial sin uh, attracts the flames of purgatory. Uh, in other words, we need to be punished uh, for the, for the uh, residues of any, any sin, not just mortal sins, but any sin whatsoever. Fire burns our bodies made of clay if they were to burn us. And so therefore it's very quick. The consumption is very quick. Whereas those flames uh, are not very quick. Uh, They don't just burn clay, but they burn interior things. So as you know as well, the souls in purgatory do not have their bodies yet. And so 
and they will not have a bodies in purgatory because at the end of time, no one will go to purgatory at the end of time when they get the bodies back. So, but this doesn't mean that there's, there's still sensible burning and hurt, just like our souls, as St. Thomas Aquinas says, is sensitive upon reaching a physical fire, so our souls also are apprehensive and can know how that feels. So the same thing analogously, those souls in purgatories, because their very souls are the principles by which the physical body forms. So even though you put aside your body at the end of your life, you still have these innate principles uh, that have the capacity to form sens sensorial realities, which is the body. So these will be punished, and they will burn without consumption. So therefore, they will continue fire, uh, continue not dying down. And then the last logical explanation of these purgatory pains is we must consider that the temporal loss of God is the worst punishment. So not just the flames uh, that will consume any given man or woman in purgatory, but the fact that they lost God, who is their f source of all security, even in this life, we cannot even, St. Paul says, we cannot even breathe. We have our being, we move in God. Even pagans are some, somehow sustained by God uh, in some mysterious way. But in purgatory, all that is kind of like blacked out. So it's a big blackout. And you descend into the earth. And the farther you descend into the earth, the less secure you be and left utterly alone besides all the punishments and pains. But as we said last week, the only source of hope and would kind of give you a sense of a tiny bit of serenity would be the fact that you know that you're saved, that you have not lost your soul, that this will end, and then you will be ushered into the beatific vision, into the eternal kingdom of God. Now, our last point here, so our second and last point, would be, could the holy souls in purgatory help us? In that great book, read it, read it, or rue it, glory to this question. Could the souls in purgatory help us? And that is, yes. Those souls in purgatory, every one little thing we can do for them, they do a thousand for us, bigger things for us. That's why we should pray for the souls in purgatory, not just to get some sort of benefit from them, but to help them authentically. But the souls in purgatory cannot help themselves. That's their, that's their plight. They can't help themselves, and they're not official or intercessors of the church. Only the, only the saints in heaven are our official intercessors. I remember when I was uh, in a parish, uh, parochial vicar, I was very little time ever a, uh, pastor so <laughs> uh, but anyway I was a pa so they tell me to come bless the house and across the street from the house uh, they had a cemetery and um, and a little kid I think he was six or seven years old uh, he used to see a lot of people walking around the cemetery and just making a gesture to them like like a prayer hand prayers you know the kid wasn't scared it was just something very natural you know, in other words, he was seeing the souls in purgatory asking uh, for prayers. And even when this happened, look, Mom, over there, and the Mom didn't see anyone. So sometimes they visit us and they ask us for prayers. And it's very rare, this, so don't be scared, you know, especially at night. Yeah. But it, it could happen. Yeah. It could happen that someone has a sort of, some of these souls are kind of very hypersensitive to spiritual things, and it can be able to detect uh, that souls are in need. Uh, I think it's almost like a comparison of a mother's heart. Mother's heart are more in tune with Junior than, uh, than the husband. The husband has no clue what he needs. Uh, but the mother intuitively knows exactly the, the hurts and what solutions to give uh, to the problems. 
Or this story of Father Paul Sullivan speaking about a Jean-Marie, uh, a young lady in France. In the early 1920s, she, uh, she heard a sermon from a priest. And the priest was talking about how the souls in purgatory are stuck there. And all it takes is just want to have one mass set for them and they'll be released. But that person forgot about making more masses. And so therefore they have to stick there for centuries, perhaps three or four centuries more, until someone will do that one mass to be applied to their soul and be released. And this sermon impressed her so much that she decided to develop a devotion and to the holy souls. So everything she did and prayed and was for the holy souls. And so she began to do that. And, and she had to go to uh, Paris. And she went to Paris. And, um, and she got sick. And she went inside uh, the um, hospital. And she, the little money that she had, she had to spend on all the doctors there. And so when she was finally released, she only had like two francs left. And this was before the age of the, of the Vimno or the uh, internets and all that, so that she couldn't just, you know, call her mom and say, hey, I need some money. She was stuck in Paris. And she only had two francs left. She said, well, I got to go to Mass. So she went to Mass and she went to the sacristy and told the, the priest if he had a slot open to offer up this Mass I'll give you two francs for the Holy Souls without telling her story. And the priest said, oh, yes, okay. So he took the two francs, offered this Mass up for the souls in purgatory. And at the Mass, the girl found herself in the parish square, dawning on her that she had absolutely no money to get back home, to take a train to go back home. And so she felt extremely uh, unprotected and fearful. And as soon as she came to the height of that feeling, a young man approached her and says, what's the matter with you? And she explained her whole story to him. And she says, oh, don't worry. I know a, a lady down the street uh, that is in need of a maid. You can work for her for two weeks, get your money, and you can, you can go back home uh, with that money. Oh, okay, well, show me where it is. So he escorted her to a certain house and knocked on the door and, and the young man left and a woman opened up the door and says yes may I help you and she says yes I, I hear that you're in need of a maid so I'm here to work for you until I can get my enough money to go home and the lady her eyeballs were pop, popping out of her head and, and she says oh how did you know just 10 minutes ago, my, my maid walked out, and I am in need, but how did you know? He says, well, a young man brought me here and told me that you needed one. And she looked over her shoulder and saw a, a picture of that young man in her home. He says, that's the young man who told me. And the woman was dumbfounded, as that was her son that died 10 years ago. And she... Uh, was sad about the missing of her son. He said, are you sure he died 10 years ago? That's him with a little scar over his left eyebrow. That was him, the same one that I see in that picture. And so every little thing that we could do for the souls in purgatory, uh, they can pull strings and help us abundantly. And as... I guess as a priest, you have a little bit of advantage, you know, and the memento, I always think about these souls in purgatory. Uh, this guy or this per other person is, per uh, sometimes I forget because I have so many petitions to pray for this one and the other one. Uh, I only have uh, four and a half seconds to remember them all. Uh, but you know, if, if I can give them a few minutes of refreshment, as the canon says, uh, then... Wow, what they can do for me. <laughs> what they can do for me is beyond uh, imagining. The souls that we can be the secondary cause of having them going into heaven just because 
They can go and see the beatific vision. They can be there reaching a safe harbor just because of your pains and aches and your generosity and your prayers and your offering up of masses, offering up of communions, praying the rosary so that that one person can now be in the eternal kingdom of heaven saying, oh, just because of Joan or just because of Harry, I made it. And therefore, now you have a tiger up in heaven fighting for your family, fighting for your interceding in, in the beatific vision before the heavenly Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, ushering all those graces and all of those blessings upon your war-worn family. Blowing gaskets all over the place, two left feet, um, wounds in festering. And that's what you need. You need more help in heaven. So, as we continue this holy sacrifice of the Mass, let us put aside all of these entertainments by which we entertain ourselves. That was a famous sermon uh, when I used to live in New Orleans as a boy. The priest used to say, put aside that beer can now on Mardi Gras day and now pick up your rosaries, he used to tell us. You know, and uh, I say, oh, I'm already a step ahead. I don't drink any beer, you know, being 11 years old. You know. uh, but the same analysis that could, uh, could apply to us we're kind of nonchalantly walking around entertaining ourselves and being lazy and slothful. Zexta Jessima, now very soon Lent, will tell us to get to work, uh, to do penance, to help our immortal souls and to help souls get to God. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Amen.